All right, so here I've just duplicated out four cubes. Uh, and we're going to do something just to show you something very simply about how our blend shapes are actually additive and we can assign multiple blend shapes to multiple objects. So I've just moved that same vertice. We're just looking at one vertice at a time here just to simplify this right down. And what you can see here is I've got different um, shapes uh, with that one vertice moved in different areas. Select the last one and we're just going to go create blend shape uh, with our reset settings and that will create a blend shape node here. Now we can kind of just come in here and we could hide those, uh, but let's leave them up for now. And you can see that we have our vertice moving in different directions, kind of like this. So that's, uh, you can see that we can make multiple uh, blend shapes in one go. Um, to add another one, uh, simply duplicate your object with, with it zeroed out, so that's exactly the same as the base object. And we can now grab another one and move it in a different direction here and select that object first this one second and we can go edit formulas uh, blend shape so we're editing we're not creating like we did at the first we're actually editing now and we can come in here the blend shape and we'll go add option box specify the node is by default it'll go to blend shape one but you can specify it there if you've got multiple blend shape nodes hit apply and close and now you'll notice that this we'll have an extra cube, that last one that we've just added. So that's how you can add uh, blend shapes. Now, just to have a look at this guy here to see that he's he is actually additive, you can see that last one that we did sort of move the vertice in this direction. But if we go back to this first cube, which is called cube five, so let's come here and look at cube five. We can see that that will actually move it across. And you can see that because we've moved that vertice X units across sort of one unit-ish, uh, you can see how that's adding now, but it's not actually taking it to this one. In fact, there's no object here that matches that object because the, what it's doing, it's adding those two together to get that new vertex position. So this is great because in facial animation and a lot of other uses, we can have a lot of different blend shapes that are really controlling different parts of the face or different parts of the body or for whatever we're, we're working on in our rig. So um, here, this vertice we can see now we've got um, our other ones and we can blend them together. That one's moving it down a little bit, which is this guy here. So moving it down. And of course, this last one will move it up a little bit. But because we've moved it a little bit down, it's not going to move it quite as high as this guy. Um, if we come sort of here, we can sort of see how high that is. It's a bit lower because we're actually blended in this other one here where we've moved the vertice down a little bit. So if I take that off, we can now see that our vertice is at that exact same height. One other thing that I'd like to mention here is just that uh, these uh, shapes here are actually still live and connected to this object. So if we are to select the vertice here, uh, we can see that it will move uh, and still update in real time with that object there. And so that this becomes quite handy for us in uh, a multitude of different situations. That vertice is not actually on this object, so we haven't switched the blend shape slider on for that particular one. So I'm sliding them on for all of these guys. You can see that now that's in there and we could get uh, different results from doing this in different ways. Of course, we could move all the vertices around in different variations and we're going to get different combinations uh, over here with these four shapes all added together. But with all this sort of stuff, I say uh, you, do, you do not need to have these still active. We could actually hit delete and our blend shapes are still going to be there. They're still going to be working, no problems. But it's a real problem now for us to get our blend shapes back. Uh, so we might as well just keep them in the scene. They're not going to be taking up too much memory and room so just keep them in your scene and it's a good idea perhaps just in the outliner just to maybe group those guys call them your blend shapes uh, of course you'd name them appropriately as to what they actually are but now you can just key them the visibility off or put them in a layer called blends blend shape sorry double click on that here we go blend shape underscore layer hit save and uh, we can add them by right clicking and add selected now we can uh, either reference them or turn them on and off so they're not selectable uh, and switch them on and off and that's 
not a bad way to have scene management. Otherwise, we can just switch them off here uh, in in our visibility, making sure. I'm just going to delete some keyframes there, making sure that we have a visibility off there. So a couple of different ways of doing things. Um, with blend shapes. That's sort of a very quick overview of additive blend shapes.